off with a scenario. I want you to imagine that you just bought the most perfect cake in front of you, but there's two problems. It's small and your friend is with you. So let's say that you and your friend agree from the beginning that you are going to cut and that you are going to choose your first piece. So the question is, how would you cut the cake? Would you cut it so that both of the pieces are even? Or would you cut it so that one piece is bigger than the other? Now let's change it up a little bit and let's say that you're still the person cutting, but this time your friend gets to pick first. How would you cut the cake then? Would you cut it in even pieces? Or would you still cut to where one is bigger than the other? I want you to keep your answer in mind while we analyze this really simple situation. So obviously in that first situation, you want to cut yourself the bigger piece and take the bigger piece. It is your cake after all. But in that second situation, where your friend is going to pick the first piece, you would want to cut even pieces because you don't want to end up with a smaller piece of cake. This is really simple. It's understandable. It's logical. It makes sense. It's just cake cutting. In both situations, you are behaving in a way that benefits yourself the most. But depending on whether your friend gets to pick the, pick the piece first, will change your behavior. And this is what game theory is. We're using game theory every single day, whether we realize it or not. We're using it at home, we're using it at school, we're using it even at work. We use it to determine how to cut a cake. Game theory analyzes the steps a person takes when they're making a decision and how that decision will ultimately affect the outcome for yourself and for those involved. Choosing how to cut a cake is a game where every decision you make will affect the outcome for yourself, both for yourself and for your friend. When you are in control, when you are holding that knife, you want to put, you want to put yourself in that better position where you will benefit the most from the situation. Now I want to play a game. This is called the numbers game, and it's actually from the book The Art of Strategy. This game is used to demonstrate how game theory works with a game maker's perspective and a player's perspective. So behind this question mark, I have a pre-selected number. Your job is to guess the number behind the question mark. You as an audience have five guesses. And after each guess, I will tell you whether your, my number is higher or lower than your number. So if you're thinking about this game strategically and logically, what would your first guess be? 50. 50 is the perfect place to start, and here's why. By me telling you that my number is less than 50, well, now you've eliminated half of the possibility, and you've increased your chances from 1 in 100 to 1 in 50. Now your second guess. What would your second guess be? 25, good, you're catching on. But my number is bigger than 25. Now your third guess, what is your third guess going to be? It would be 37, because again, it is that halfway, part, halfway point between 25 and 50. But my number is still bigger than 37. Now your fourth guess, what is your fourth guess going to be? 43. But my number is still higher than 43. But you're getting really close. Now before your last guess, I'm going to give you a hint. I, as the game maker, my goal is to make you lose. I do not want you to win. I know that strategically your best bet is to divide the numbers in half and increase your chances of guessing it randomly correct on that last try. But the number here that I picked was intentional. It was meant to reduce your chances of getting it right, even if you are increasing your chances every step of the way. So if you're thinking about this logically, what number am I least expecting you to say? Which one is the last one that you would ever think of when you have a range of 43 to 50? I'm hearing a lot of 49s. 
49. So I want you to raise your hand if you believe that the number is 49. That's quite a few of you. Now I want you to use that hand and pat yourself on the back because you just got the participation award because you lost. And I'm really sorry. <laughs> and let me tell you why. From the very beginning, I was being intentional with my choices with the number that I picked and the information that I was giving you. The number that I picked was, like I said, intentional. It was meant to reduce your chances of guessing it right. Before your last guess, I even told you what my goal was and that this number would be the very last one that you expect. My number here was 48. 49 was close, but you weren't right. By picking 48, I put myself in a better position. Because the chances of you actually straying away from 49 after all of the information that I've given you is actually quite low. I calculated my chances before I came here today. Everything is a game. Every time you are making a decision, this game theory applies. Now reverse psychology can work with the game too. I know that you know what my strategy is. And so if from the very beginning I believe that you are going to pick 48, then I would pick 49 or even 47. But this is where it gets complicated. We could keep going back and forth between 48 and 49. And we could even throw in 47. But ultimately, it comes down to chance. It comes down to probability. And this is what decision making is. In your life, before you make a decision, you have to calculate your chances, and you weigh your outcomes, and that's how you make your decision. All of this here is game theory. It's just from different perspectives. When you are put in a situation where you have to make a decision, you have to take into consideration what the objective is, and how the other people in that same situation will behave. That is how you should make your decisions. So with the cake cutting game, you are putting yourself in that better position. You took into consideration what your friend was gonna do, whether they were picking a piece or not. And that's how you ended up with either the bigger piece of cake or at least an equal slice of cake. But in the numbers game, you guys lost because you failed to take into consideration what my true objective was and what my true strategy was. We're using game theory every day to make decisions. When you are put in a situation where you have to make a decision, it is ultimately a game. Imagine you're in school and you're taking a test. What is your best strategy? It's to study. But what happens if you didn't study? Well, then you would want to increase your chances of getting an A. How would you do that? Well, when you have a question in front of you, you want to increase your chances of getting the correct answer. So you would cross off the answers that you know aren't right and increase your chances. By increasing your chances of getting the right answer on each question, you're increasing your overall chance of getting an A. When you're trying to pick people for a group project, you don't want to pick the people who won't do work. You want to pick the people who will actually help you and which will result in a better outcome for your presentation. A few other examples would be when you are bargaining with a salesperson for a car or a house, when you're trying to pick a route home, when you're trying to cut a cake. You're using game theory. Everything is a game, but you have to make sure that you take into consideration what the objective is and what the strategy is. Just because it's a game doesn't mean you should take it lightly. If we're really thinking about it, life is a game where you are constantly making decisions. And each decision will affect the outcome for both yourself and everyone else involved. So you should really take the time to sit down and consider what your true objective is, what the strategies are, and what the outcomes may be. Because life is a game. So let's take up that challenge and let's play to our full potential. Thank you.